Welcome back to Torque and Power. It has been some time, about three weeks since the last time we put up a video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This channel is all about fun, and as you can tell from the flags, we're predominantly uh, Harley Davidson's here. We love the experience those bikes provide. Uh, not to say we're not about other bikes, we do have other ones over here. As you can see, we got the Kawasaki and Hondas and all sorts of other ones that we actually go out, we test drive, we go have fun with. Uh, but definitely predominantly Harley Davidson just because of the experience that those bikes provide. But uh, welcome. Uh, if you're a subscriber, hey, you know, welcome back. But uh, if you're not, you guys know what to do. Click that button, hit subscribe. I don't need to tell you. But today we're going to do something a little different. I thought it would be a fun video. I woke up this morning. I'm like, you know, it's time to do a video. You know, life's been busy, but it's time to make some time for it. So today we're going to talk about this bad boy the V-Rod and in particular my V-Rod muscle and the biggest kind of I feel the most controversial bike I see videos out there about this bike kind of being a hated Harley Davidson uh, I don't really see it kind of from an owner's perspective I thought it'd be interesting to do it from an owner's perspective now that I've had this bike for four years and uh, shed some light on it give you guys some stories have some fun and we'll take it out for a little ride and talk all right let's get going All right, before we hop on this bike, I thought maybe we should go over some of the stuff that actually I feel makes this bike so controversial amongst Harley Davidson owners. It cracks me up. This, this bike, I either get the most questions about it when I go to events and rallies and drives and everything else, or I get the most comments about this bike. Not always the most favorable. I think everyone's just having fun and joshing you and all that good stuff. Uh, but this bike by far, it, it just, it always has a reaction, whether it's good or bad. And I think from both sides of the camp, whether you own a V-Rod, uh, there's reactions on that side of it or what they think about the guys who have the baggers. And then there's the other side of it, the guys who got the baggers and then they think you got this bike, right? But we'll cover those stories when I go to hop on. But I thought it'd be case of points so you guys can kind of get a little visual of what actually I think is makes this bike so controversial. First off, the most obvious without a question is this bike does not have what? It does not have bags. Out of question, that is definitely number one. It's just this bike is not a bagger. And if it's not a bagger and you're not part of that club, you're just gonna get grief. I don't care if you're on a Sportster, you're on a Dyna, you're on whatever, doesn't matter, soft tail, you're gonna get grief just from guys who are on baggers. That's number one. But like I said, we'll cover more of this stuff like on the ride, I'll give you guys some good stories. Number two that makes this bike so controversial, especially amongst Harley guys, right? All those bikes are always air-cooled, right? So now this, you're gonna get it from every group except for this one. Because this bike has this wonderful little thing down here that makes this bike go so quick with 122 horsepower and 87 torque is this guy, this radiator. And as nice as I think it hardly integrated it, and it does a good job of looking at it, especially with the whole muscle thing, I think it still doesn't flow well with people, right? It still has a radiator and you're away from that old school look that Harley has going on. That is by far number two. Uh, I think number three is the motor. Being a 60 degree motor, as you guys can see, going away from Harley's traditional 45. And again, of course, being liquid cooled, again, you got the hoses, everything else. Like here, you got your radiator hose, your water pump. But this being a 60 degree, it throws people off as well, which then lends you to my last part, which is the exhaust. Because it is a 60 degree, it is liquid cooled, it is gonna provide a different sound. And even though I like the sound, it is, yeah, it's definitely different from my, from my Street Glide Special and from the Fatboy S but I think it has a great sound. And this is just with slip-ons with the Vance and Hines, as you guys can see from back here. Um, I still think it provides a great sound. It kind of has that Tommy gun kind of sound, you know, kind of a rapid fire. Instead of the potato potato that you guys get from the Streak Light Special that I have, and then of course the Fat Boy S as well. But 
those I think are definitely by far the most controversial points when it comes to this bike. Uh, I think what that's what kind of provides it a little bit of hatred. Uh, it is also has a hydroform frame that is exposed. I don't think that's the thing. I think it definitely adds to the bike. That is unusual. Most Harleys, they cover up the frame. This is part of the artwork for a bike like this. You have an exposed frame, so if you guys didn't know that. Uh, also, these fins, uh, since it isn't air-cooled, it doesn't actually need these fins, but they're trying to kind of give it that look that Harley-Davidson's have of having the air-cooled and the fins actually having a purpose. But on this, it's just purely for style. Um, but yeah, besides that, I think that's really about it. That really causes most people to get underneath their skin and have to have the need to pull you over or come up to you and have a negative comment about it at rallies or stuff. Or on the other side, there's certainly people who are positive who want to ask questions about it. But let's jump on the bike, let's go for a little ride. I think this bad boy needs some gas. Uh, you guys can have a little experience. I'm trying to make these videos a little bit shorter so we can do more of these instead of long videos that are a half hour. Maybe like 20 minute videos I think would be pretty good, right? We can get more of those out. But yeah, so let's jump on, let's go for a ride. All right. Just, just got gas. And let's start this video up. Let's get going. Let's start talking about why this is the most controversial Harley Davidson, especially in my mind. Especially in my mind, I think it's the most controversial V Rod or Harley Davidson. And why? And I'll give you some stories. Because God knows I certainly got them without a question. So many stories when it comes to this bike. So I've owned this bike since new 2017. Prior to buying this bike, I went to go test drive them in 2016 up at the Milwaukee Rally, up in Milwaukee for the National Hog Rally that they have up there. And Harley puts on a big deal. Uh, they have every single bike you can test drive, which is what I did because I was new to Harley Davidson, what to know what it was about. But I was particularly interested in this bike. Uh, I just thought this bike oh, looked so hot. I mean, so fast, just standing still. I really wanted to know what this thing felt like. So got on it, drove it, fell in love with it, all that good stuff. So I'm on this bike, and it's a demo one. It's a Night Rod Special, similar to this, right? They made two different models, the V-Rod Muscle and the Night Rod Special in 17. And I pull up to a light, and I'm about to jump on the highway for this demo loop, and it's like a 13-mile loop, something like that, that Harley-Davidson allows you to go on, and it's all solo, it's a blast. And this lady pulls up with this pickup truck, and she's a passenger, and she leans out the window and proceeds to yell at me that this bike is not a real Harley Davidson. I mean, like, full throttle at me, yelling. Like, she knows me, like, she hates me. You know, like, I took her baby or something. She's yelling at me over this thing. And so after about the second time that she yells at me over it, I point to the side of the tank going, well, it looks like a Harley Davidson to me. It's got it on the side. Obviously, they're proud of it enough to put their name on it. She goes, oh, it doesn't sound like a Harley Davidson, blah, blah, therefore it's not a Harley Davidson. I'm like, oh, you own a Harley Davidson? And she goes, no, I don't own one, but I know what they're supposed to sound like. And I'm like, all right, well then maybe you know how one goes as well. And I took off in the light, and of course this thing just goes like a bat out of hell. Uh, that was my first experience with it. I had no idea that this stuff went on. I had no idea that there was like hatred in between brands. Uh, in between the brand, I'm sorry, in between the brand, I didn't know there was like hatred in, in models and there was this division between it. And I come from the sport bike world, you know, Kawasaki and Yamaha and Honda and all that good stuff for all those years I rode it. You know, you didn't get bashed. I mean, guys would tease you, you know, if you had a smaller CC bike, but you never got bashed. You never got guys coming up making comments and stuff like that. Mostly it was always positive stuff. People always were interested in what you're about your bike. 
So, okay, so, you know, I kind of blew that comment off, like, all right, you know, that woman's a little crazy, maybe she hit the bar early or something, and went out with my life. Well, got back, bought myself a V-Rod Muscle, my brother bought a Night Rod Special, amazing moment, you guys get an opportunity to buy a, a motorcycle with your siblings, I highly recommend it, it was just a great experience, Harley Davidson provides a great experience of buying a product, I wish cars did it, I wish other motorcycle manufacturers did the same experience where it just makes you feel like you bought something amazing, celebrate it, ding the bell, ring the horn, all that good stuff that they do. So now I, now I have the bike. All right, so you got to imagine now you, you bought your first Harley, right? You're on cloud nine. The bike goes like no one's business. It's a blast. I'm looking online and stuff, seeing what I want to get. I, I put on slip-ons, you know, to give the bike some noise. And, and then I go in to get some oil, to do an oil change on the bike. And I go up to the Harley counter, and this is again at a dealership now. And the guy goes, okay, well, what kind of bike do you have so I can get the filter, right? And I tell him, oh, I, you know, I have a V-Rod, right? I'm all smiles and I'm all proud. And he goes, oh, with a straight face. He looks and he goes, oh, I'm sorry. And then turns around and walks away to go get my filter. And it took me a while to kind of comprehend because I had such a great experience of like buying the bike and everything else has been phenomenal. And now this guy's like dissing my bike and he works for Harley. He works for a Harley dealership. They sell V-Rods there, right? And I'm like, what the heck? And my brother's looking at me like, what the heck? I mean, how does this happen, right? So the guy comes back and I go, I'm sorry, what did you say? He goes, oh, I'm just sorry you got one of those. I'm like, why would you possibly be sorry that I have a V-Rod? Oh, well, it's it's not a bagger. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's not a bagger. Why why would that have to, why would it have to be a bagger? He goes, oh, well, you know, when you're ready to upgrade and you want like a real bike and blah, blah. And uh, I'm like, all right, thanks. I walk out and, you know, I was on the edge of like, man, I have to talk to this guy's manager. It's not kind of my gig to, you know, kind of rat someone out and get on him about it, but and I leave with my brother, I'm like, man, do you can't believe that? Like, what is with these people and, like, dissing these bikes? Well, then I start to find out, you know, it's not just, oh, my God, the V-Rod. You know, it's obviously the bike's liquid-cooled. It's different, right? It's liquid-cooled. The bike's quick. It's got a different look. It's not a traditional Harley. And Harley guys, you know, who are the traditionalists can get threatened very easily. I mean, it's like anybody, right? Anybody who, who sees change... They don't want change. They want what they own and their bike. And they don't want Harley to change and, and do anything different and draw in younger riders or different riders. They like it just the way it is because that's why they bought the bike and they want it to stay that way. So they got reasons to hate on it, right? It's liquid cool. Oh, it's a 60 degree. Oh, it doesn't sound like it. Oh, you know, it can look like a girl's bike. And this isn't a rant. I'm not making rants by any means. I just, I really find it extremely humorous that people get so bent out of shape. And then you find out, oh, the sportsters, they get knocked. Oh, that's a girl's bike. And which that makes no sense, right? I mean, there so many people have started there and then they worked their way up to baggers and, and then it's Dinah's and soft tails and then Dinah guys are on B-Rod people. And it, it just blows me away. And I had a guy who was on a Dinah and he's telling me his 110 Dinah will absolutely blow my bike away and his bike is stock and how much faster it is, and why would I buy that? It's not a real bike, he's going on about it, and I'm like, all right, hey, pause, buddy. And so then I had to give him this story. I'm on with the exact same demo event that I was on a Dyna Lowrider S. I went out for a test drive on that bike, and a guy pulls up on a V-Rod that he's demoing, and this guy is on this bike, right? I mean, it is no joke. He's on this bike, he's burning the tires every chance he gets. I love uh, I love those kind of little turns too, by the way. I love those things, but I like going all the way around those kind of rides, those little uh, roundabouts. But anyways, that's another story, I guess. But um, he pulls up on this thing. I mean, he's just, he's cooking the tire. This guy knows how to drive, it's cool. I've, I've driven for years, I know how to drive a bike. And we both have the lineup in a light. It's a straight shot and it goes in kind of to an industrial area. So light turns green, he's not ready for me to go. I take off, burn the tire, I go through the intersection. He hasn't even left yet. 
Now I'm on a Dyna Lowrider S with the 110 and 17, right? So the older styles on Dyna, not a not a soft tail platform. And it moves, it cooks, right? And I shifted in a second. Things winding up. I hear him leave, and I'm already now through the intersection. I hear him peel the tires. As I go to shift in the third, he goes flying past me like I'm standing still. Standing still. I'm like, there's no way he's going to get me. Like, I'm already that far. And, and before you guys get in, like, oh, I don't know how to drive. No, I, I know how to drive. I'm not a professional racer by any means, but I know how to drive. And I shot off with that bike and did not matter. He caught up with me and passed me like I was nothing. And I was like, holy cow, is that bike quick. So I tell the guy the story. He's like, oh, must not be the case. I mean, I'm like, well, you want to go out? Like, right now, I don't mind. We can do, like, a little roll and see, see what you got. Uh, and that's what we did. And, of course, <laughs> needless to say, uh, we didn't go to the next stop. He, uh, he decided to take upon himself, and he just turned off. He didn't want to go anymore. But I think the point was proven. I mean, the bike can just move. And when you got 9,000 RPMs to go up to, you got a ton of space in that RPM range. And other bikes, other Harleys, you know, they're sitting at that 5,500. They got to be shifting, right? Twice as much. Uh, and with 122 horsepower, it moves. But so that was another story. I thought, I thought that was interesting. I will get guys at the shows all the time in the rallies. And they'll either come up to me. And, they, and there's a lot of people who are cool. And they want to know about the bike. And they're looking at the bike. And, and, um, and showing their buddies the bike. And and uh, asking questions, you know, what do I think about it, the turning radius, how about this, how about that, the liquid cooled, all that good stuff. And a lot of cool positive vibes from it. Uh, and then there's the flip side of the guys who, you know, want to be like, oh, okay, when you grow up, you're going to be on a man's bike, on a magger. Uh, but what I do find interesting, and I might leave you guys on this note, which I think it all boils down to, besides obviously, you know, guys who got baggers, you know, it's a bigger bike, so therefore you're more man, and then you pay for more than pay more for the bike too so they, they almost feel like they got that right as well but what it boils down to is when you go to talk to these guys and I have right I got no fear like you know what's your why are you dissing the bike you know what's your deal have you ever ridden the bike and I'm telling you every single time I have not come across someone who disses the bike who has ridden the bike they have never driven the bike but they're sitting here slamming it so purely from what they think that they know, they're sitting here and willing to slam another Harley Davidson. And it just, it blows my mind. I mean, Harley Davidson isn't stopping making touring bikes. They're just separating out and doing more of a market. I mean, wouldn't you want a company that's got an extremely fast, cool looking bike too? You don't gotta buy it. But I mean, isn't that cool that you can get that kind of tech and then maybe it will trickle itself into the bagger and make the bagger faster? It's not going to also change your world. I mean, if you know Harley Davidson at all, you know without a question that they got to stick with the touring bikes. I mean, that is their freaking bread and butter when it when it comes to it, without a question. Oh, man, I like how this bike sounds. Oh, that's just slip-ons, by the way. Just slip-ons. Plenty loud enough for me. Um, but, yeah, they've, they've never driven the bike, but they're willing to slam the heck out of it all over the place just because oh it's liquid cool and they're going off of what other guys say and i've had salesmen salesmen who have talked crap to me about talk crap to me about how the bike isn't as fast as a fat boy s and this and that i'm like dude i own a fat boy s i know exactly how fast you know i think the bike is cool as heck i love it i mean it, it looks it, it looks tough without a question you know i think it's like the one of the most iconic Harleys that they make. It just has a real old school style to it, which is why I have it, right? It's a great look. All blacked out in the ass. And I'm like, it's not even close. No, you're wrong, you're wrong. I'm thinking, first of all, you either gotta be like the worst salesman in the world that I tell you I own both bikes and you're slamming me as a customer, yet you're hanging out with me to try to sell me another bike. <laughs> it's like, so you gotta laugh, right? You gotta laugh. Just people. People sometimes just can't get out of their own way. Um, I love Harley Davidson people without a question. 99% of everyone who I've ran into in the Harley world are absolutely awesome. I love how they embrace 
other Harley riders, no matter what you got, honestly, no matter if you got a V-Rod, a Sportster, so many people just embrace that you're part of the club, you're in the community, and really that's what this channel is about. Uh, it, it, it's about the community and riding motorcycles and Harley Davidson and, and all that good stuff. That's what I really want this channel to turn into and have it as people coming out and reaching out and riding with other riders and joining up and doing group rides and all that good stuff and meeting people because I do find Harley Davidson people to be the best people and I've brought so many different riders into Harley Davidson just because of that because I think it's a, such a great experience that the company provides that they've gone you know far far beyond with and the people who are actually out and about on the tours and the uh, Sturgis and Tail the Dragon in DC, Rolling Thunder, all these rides that I've done, everyone's just been absolutely amazing. And it blows me away that I couldn't have got into this uh, club earlier. You know, that was on the sport bikes. I never understood it. I never had someone else to show me. I kind of, I had to do it myself. Uh, and now I feel like that's what it is. You got to pay it forward and bring other people in. And if you're thinking about getting a V-Rod, and I'm going to do a whole series on the V-Rod because there's so much stuff to talk on the V-Rod. This is like step one on Harley-Davidson V-Rod. There's so much to talk about. But if you're thinking about getting a V-Rod and it's, you know, kind of, you know, you're on the fence about it, do it. It is a great bike. It is a great bike. If you want to go touring and go cross country, obviously go more for a touring bike without a question. You're going to be a lot more comfortable, get a lot more stuff in. Um, but if you like speed, you like the way it looks, you like it, it, it's the reliability is just absolutely, oh, got to get out of it again. There we go. And that's, God, that's just like barely any throttle. This seems so much fun. Let's see, we'll keep with a lot of bikes. But if you are interested in it, do it. It is a great bike. You cannot go wrong. And now that they're discontinued after the 15 years, these things I feel for sure will become collectible bikes. But I'm going to leave you there, and uh, maybe the next one will be an oil change, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, I'm going to drop the oil and the filter on this bad boy, uh, get some fresh oil in this guy. She certainly deserves it. I keep going guy and she, right, with the bike. i got to figure out the gender of this motorcycle, I guess, still. But, uh, yeah, so I think that'll be the next video. So I appreciate you guys checking in. Uh, again, welcome to Torque and Power if you're new. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys down the road. Later.